Robocop 2 is a platform shooter video game based on the 1990 film of the same name. The game was released for several platforms, including Amiga, Amstrad GX 4000, Atari ST, Commodore 64, Game Boy, Nintendo Entertainment System, and ZX Spectrum. Ocean Software developed and published several versions, and Data East manufactured an arcade version. Robocop 2 is based on the 1990 film of the same name, in which a Detroit cyborg cop known as Robocop must stop a drug distributor, Kane, from spreading a new drug known as Nuke. The Game Boy and Nintendo Entertainment System NES, versions are primarily shoot-em-up games, for, they differ from the Amiga, Amstrad GX 4000 and Commodore 64 versions, which also differ from each other. In addition to side-scrolling platform levels, the Amiga and ZX Spectrum versions include other levels consisting of first-person shooting galleries, an aspect from the original Robocop game, and a puzzle game in which the player must help Robocop remember his memories by arranging certain electronic chip. The Amiga and Atari ST versions were developed by Special FX and published by Ocean Software 5, 8, 9, which also developed the NES and Game Boy versions. Programming of the Amiga version began months before the film's release, a 5. As a guide, the special effects development team was given a pre-release version of the film that excluded several scenes. The team was also given a preliminary script of the film and pictures of the characters, a 5. Audio samples from the film, including Robocop's gunfire and footsteps, were added into the Amiga version, the ZX Spectrum and Amiga versions include digitized scenes from the film. In the United Kingdom, Ocean released the Amiga version in November 1990, followed by the release of the Amstrad GX 4000, Game Boy and Atari ST versions the following month. A Nintendo Entertainment System NES, version had been released in the United States by April 1991. An arcade version, manufactured by Data East, was also released in 1991. The ZX Spectrum version won Best Game Overall in the 1990 Crash Readers Awards. After being chosen by 21% of the magazine's readers, the ZX Spectrum version also won fifth place in the 1990 Year Sinclair Readers Awards, and by April 1991 had reached second place in UK sales behind Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. It's your move, creep, cause Robocop 2 is here, will you buy or not? Truth is, if you don't buy it then you're definitely going to be playing with a short deck this Christmas, or have a 48k specy that Robocop's immense 128k of music, digitized graphics, and all action gameplay won't fit into. So, he's back. He never really went away though as Robocop 1 never actually left the software charts. He's been out there, serving the public trust, protecting the innocent and upholding everything for nearly two years, you'd think they'd give the poor sod a break. So, what must he do now? Well, Robocop must make his way through seven levels of action to where he must eventually confront Robocop 2, but to get there he must complete each of the differing levels. Level 1 begins in the river sludge plant where he must locate the nuke lab. Along the way there are some unarmed suspects that are crying out to be arrested, arrest flashes at the top left of the screen and Robocopy must walk into them, cause if you shoot them, a time penalty is taken away, quite right too. As Robocop progresses, he gets the chance to recover the memory chips of his human past. This section of the game presents itself as a puzzle, whereby you have to journey around a circuit board, collecting 32 chips to complete the picture on the four boards. Unfortunately, you cannot cross circuits that you have passed along previously because they have burnt out Mon. There are also two sessions at the Detroit shooting range to sharpen up his targeting skills. He gets one minute to shoot as many armed targets as possible, whilst studiously avoiding anyone who looks like a Joe Bloggs type citizen. Graphics are good and sound, thanks to the 128K only format, is musically good, although spot effects are somewhat lacking. A large chunk of memory has been used up with the digitized images that greet the start of each level but gives the game an overall big feel. I like it, and I'm sure that most people will find the directive, by this game, an easy one to follow. Big license, big film, big stars, big program.